Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Jensen's. Hope you're doing well. A little while back, I did a video of the most expensive designer fragrances on the market today and whether they're worth their jacked up price. Because it seems like as time goes on, fragrances get more and more and more expensive at retail when they're first released. But there's still a lot of fragrances out there that even at full retail are not crazy expensive, at least compared to how expensive things have been getting. So with that in mind, I wanna take a look at 15 of the least expensive designer fragrances that you can get right now if you were to go into say a Sephora, Macy's or something like that, and whether these fragrances are worth it at their price. Because it's not right to just hate on everything and say everything is crazy, stupid, expensive nowadays at full retail, that the price is higher and higher and higher when there are actually some scents coming out that are not insanely priced, at least comparatively speaking. So I'm gonna have these fragrances that I talk about here today linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. And I'm not gonna go in order from cheapest to most expensive here. I'm just gonna kind of mix them all together. So some of these are gonna be a little bit more than others. They're not gonna go in order of price. And one other caveat, I did not include super cheap, ultra cheap brands here. So, you know, stuff like Guess, stuff like uh, Penguin, you know, fragrance brands like that that are already really, really cheap, like $60 or something like that at full retail. I didn't include those pretty much for the same reason I didn't include Tom Ford in the most expensive list because they're, they're kind of like outliers, right? Like Tom Ford, as far as designers goes, way more expensive than your typical designer. Penguin, as far as designer fragrances goes, way cheaper than your typical designer fragrance. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna kick things off with a very, very new release. Actually came out this year, not that long ago at all. Valentino Uomo, born in Roma, Green Stravaganza. This one might be a surprise to some of you, but I feel like Valentino prices their fragrances at a very fair price point when you consider how expensive some stuff is nowadays that's new, like in that video I just mentioned that I did before. Now it's not that this is crazy inexpensive or anything, but it is a brand new release from a very highly regarded fragrance line, at least in terms of sales. Born in Roma moves a lot of bottles, and this one, brand new MSRP 125 for a 100 mil size bottle. And the prices that I quote you here today are gonna be for that larger size bottle. So keep in mind, if you got a smaller size bottle, like a 50 mil, then it's gonna be less than the price that I quote for all of these fragrances. So yeah, Green Stravaganza, really nice price point, I feel like. And some of the other fragrances, obviously, in the Born in Roma line, gonna be at that same price point. Now, Born in Roma Intense is a little bit more than this one. That's at 140, but Coral Fantasy, Yellow Dream, you can get those for the same price as this one. And you can get a 50 mil of this one for just under $100 MSRP. Now at discounters, you can't find this one just yet. Obviously in the future, you'll be able to, but right now you can't. Green Stravaganza for me is not a bad release whatsoever. I do like Coral Fantasy bit more than this one. I like Momo Intense more than this one, uh, but still it's a solid release. And uh, for the price that this goes for compared to its contemporaries, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. So Green Stravaganza starting us off strong. Valentino, don't go crazy with the prices. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. All right, this next one is really cheap at full retail. Again, comparatively speaking to what most things go for nowadays. And it's Toy Boy by Moschino. So this one at full retail, $96. And that's for a 100 mil size bottle. So it is under $1 per milliliter, again, at full retail. This is basically half the price of Y Elixir, only you get more of it. Obviously, completely different fragrances. I'm just saying in terms of pricing. Now, if this was named Toy Boy Elixir, <laughs> it'd be a different story. I bet then it'd be like 160, but it's not. Now you can find this at discounters for about $61. So you can find it for less at discounters, obviously. Really everything that we talk about here, other than the new stuff, you can find at discounters for less. Now I wanna keep everything apples to apples. So here in terms of comparisons, I'm gonna pretty much keep everything as uh, MSRP of these versus the MSRP of most other things. So keep that in mind that most everything here you can get for less at discount or sometimes much more, but we're not gonna go heavily into the discounted prices. Just so everything is, is again, compared apples to apples. 
Now, Toy Boy is not gonna be for everybody. It has a, a very strong floral backbone to it. And even though it is marketed more toward men, this is a fragrance I think that ladies can wear just as easily. And to be fair, a lot of people don't believe in gendering fragrances at all, and that's totally cool as well. But Toy Boy, for a lot of guys, is going to be a fragrance where they smell it and they go, ah, Nah, I don't think that's for me. A little too floral, a little too this, a little too that, but it is extremely unique. And at 96 bucks, that's actually insanely affordable compared to most things nowadays. So I actually think that's pretty sick. That's a great price. Before we hop to the next one, I wanna shout out my other channel, Extra Gen Sense. If you've not checked that out, please do so. I have other fragrance videos up on there. And as always, here are a bunch of codes you can use to save money across a number of different websites. These are also in the description below. This next one you can pick up for $120 for a 100 ml size bottle, the most wanted. That's right, the most wanted, actually a very affordable fragrance. And uh, that could be seen as a bit of a surprise when you look uh, again at some of these other fragrances coming out at the, you know, 150, 60, 70, 80 dollar price range. And this one is at 120. And this one I do think is worth it. This is a fragrance that in fall and winter time is fantastic. This could be a lot of people's signature scents during the cooler months. Huge compliment puller, very versatile, great performance as well. It has that, you know, Stronger With You-esque kind of vibe. Doesn't smell the same as Stronger With You, uh, but you can tell that it's kind of following that blueprint, that warm, sweet, sexy, spicy kind of scent profile is what's going on here. So the most wanted at 120, awesome, awesome deal. And actually sometimes, um, you know, stores like Macy's will run specials where they'll have sales like 15 or 20% off across their fragrance line or their fragrance line, the fragrances that they carry. And when they do that, this is pretty much the same price at retail as it often goes for at discounters. Now in the future, I'm assuming the price on this will drop. I'm just talking about right now, right this minute. So that's three fragrances and all three, I feel like at retail compared to their contemporaries, really good. Next up, we have the GOAT, Philip Pline, PP. This is No Limits, super fresh. And this one you can get for $99. That's for a 90 ml size bottle. This one's a little interesting because Philip Pline also has a fragrance called The Skull. Because Philip Pline likes skulls because they're cool and tough. You may say, well, the skull, I've never heard about that. What does, what does that have to do with this and the pricing and everything? Well, the skull is like $600 at retail. At least that's what it's going for at the Philip Klein outlet. So you look at that and you go, holy, they are ripping you off with that. Ah. But at the same time, they go, hey, let's give them a good price on no limits, even though it has no limits, $1 trillion on the front there. So yeah, Philip Pline on the one hand, totally reaming you with the skull, and on the other hand, giving you a price on no limits. That's totally rad, totally rad, bro. Now, uh, no limits, super fresh to me is not actually super fresh, even though it has this blue bottle or kind of blue, right? blue and black, it's actually, decently close to the original No Limits. Is it fresher than the original? Sure, but is it what I would consider a fresh fragrance? Not really. Would I wanna buy this at retail? 99 bucks? Nah, probably not, no. If I were gonna get a No Limits, I would just go for the uh, original one. But still, I'm not gonna knock it because 100 bucks, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. All things considered. Next up, we got Versace Dylan Blue, $105 for 100 mil. That is worth it. If discounters did not exist, everything is, again, apples to apples, MSRP. That is worth it. Dylan Blue, you can use all year, daytime or nighttime, super versatile, good performance. The quality is nice too for that price point because this is going up against Sauvage, Y, Bleu de Chanel, fragrances like that. This is way cheaper. It's from a brand that everybody knows, and it will get the job done just about as well as those will. And Versace, by and large, has really good retail pricing. So you can get like Versace Pour Homme, Versace Mano Fraiche, Eros Eau de Toilette, all in about the same price range as Dylan Blue goes for. I didn't wanna make this just all Versace fragrances, so this is really the only one that I'm gonna feature here, but Versace is doing good 
not going with insane prices, at least not yet. So I give them a lot of respect for that. Next up, Paco Raban, 1 million lucky. $119 for 100 mils for 1 million lucky. Once again, yes. I think for that price against other fragrances, you know what they go for at retail, that is a steal. This one has a great uniqueness to it. I think that it smells like 1 million lucky. You know, it's not, oh, it smells like this plus this plus this. No, it's 1 million lucky. It smells like 1 million lucky. I love the fresh aspects in there combined with some darker aspects, a little bit of sweetness, but not overdone, which for a 1 million fragrance is sometimes uh, a rare commodity. A lot of times they are just like sweet on top of sweet, but that one has everything reined in nicely. 119 for 1 million lucky. Yes, another good buy. Then we got Varvatos, Varvatos Vintage, but like Versace, Varvatos across the board, pretty affordable. Now their most uh, recent release, XX Intense, that one's a little more expensive. I think that's like 140 at full retail. It could be wrong, it might be 120. Oh, it's one of those, I feel like. But uh, Varvatos Vintage 102. And that's actually for a larger size bottle. This is 4.2 ounces. So bigger than your typical 3.4 ounce, or you get some, some extra juice there and it's barely creeping over a hundred. And of course, if you want to go under hundred, you can get the 2.5 ounce bottle. Varvedos is a house that I think is great in terms of quality for the price point, because they are definitely on the lower end of designer pricing for the most part, for most of their releases. They smell really, really good. Varvedos Vintage, one of my favorites. So guess what? Worth it, again. See, there's a lot of fragrances out there that even at full retail, when you compare them to other things, are not that bad. I myself sometimes fall into thinking just, oh God, everything is insanely expensive nowadays. Everything is just like way overpriced. And some definitely are but not everything is. Coach for men is next, 102 for that one also. That's for a 100 mil size bottle. And uh, this is actually one of the better selling fragrances in the US. Coach for men does really, really well. And that's at retail, that's at retail. And it makes sense because 102, again, that's gonna be on the lower end of designer price points. It has that blue fragrance usability, which means somebody could buy this use it year round, wear it to the office, wear it on a date, wear it casually, it's a good compliment puller. It's really easy to wrap your head around. It's in a really attractive packaging. I mean, the bottle looks good. Built-in atomizer is slick on this one, it looks nice. And uh, it's a brand everybody knows. So yeah, once again, uh, 102, man. I, I think for that price point, for the market that this is made for, it's a really good pickup. I feel bad for Philip Klein over here because I've basically been like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't know about that one. Sorry, PB. Double P. Two Man Aqua is up next. You can get a 100 mil size. This is a 50. You can get a 100 mil size for 105. Now do keep in mind with some of these fragrance houses, if the concentration goes up in the name, like the flanker name, then typically the price will go up as well. Part of this I think is dependent on the fragrance house because some fragrance houses, the parfum version will be way more expensive than the other iterations. Other times it's not so bad. As an example, the most wanted, since we've got that one right here, there's a parfum version of the most wanted. The most wanted right here, this goes for 120. So what do you think the parfum version goes for? 140 maybe, 150, 125 actually. It goes for 125, yeah. So again, another shout out to Hazaro because I feel like if that was a different fragrance house, and I'm not gonna name any names here, but if that was a different fragrance house, then the parfum version of this would be like 150. All right, let's keep it moving, talking about Jimmy Choo. So Jimmy Choo, in my mind, is kind of linked with Coach because uh, a lot of their fragrances you would use in a similar period, similar time frames as the Coach fragrances. So, you know, Coach for Men versus Jimmy Choo Man, like those are, are fairly similar in how they come across, uh, fairly similar in terms of price point and uh, fairly similar in terms of uh, cachet of the brand, at least to me. So it makes sense that, you know, Jimmy Choo Man Aqua is gonna be really close in price point to Coach and some of the other Coach fragrances, Coach Blue and stuff like that. So this is not just Jimmy Choo Man Aqua, it's some of the other Jimmy Choo Man fragrances as well that are gonna share the same price point as this one. And uh, Jimmy Choo Man Aqua is a solid, easy wearing, you know, summertime scent. 
It's not anything crazy, but it is the type of fragrance that a lot of people find very attractive. My wife actually loves the way this stuff smells. For me on a personal level, I'd probably go with something else at full retail. Uh, but again, for the price point, this is on the lower end of the designer realm and uh, I'm definitely not gonna knock it. And it does smell actually really pleasant, super pleasant. Up next, light blue intense, or O oh, intense, excuse me, light blue O oh, intense. That is $110 at full retail. That's for a 100 mil size bottle, mine's 200 mils. So a bit of a big boy size bottle right there. Uh, 110 bucks for that stuff, kind of a no brainer, I feel like. I know that it's past its like heyday of hype or whatever when it first came out, it's years removed from that, uh, but still, if you like the original light blue, uh, but you want it modernized with a nice sea saltiness, a very fresh fragrance that has an, a little bit of a classy edge, that stuff is great for that. And good performance too for a fresh fragrance. So another solid one for a good price. Then we got Mont Blanc Explorer. This one is 118 for a 100 mil size bottle. Smells similar to Pre de Ventus, of course, with the designer edge, a designer flair. Uh, Mont Blanc Legend, one of the better selling fragrances in North America. And that one smells a bit similar to Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. So Mont Blanc has kind of a thing going on here where they're like, well, maybe if we did something a little bit like that, it would do well. And by and large, it seems to work for them. And I'll tell you when this came out, I bought it at retail. Actually, I paid more than retail because I ordered it from overseas before uh, I was here in the US. And uh, I was not a big fan of having done that. That being said, again, if we just keep everything across the board at MSRP, uh, 118, pretty affordable and the usability here the versatility everything that explorer has going for it yeah I, i've got to give that one a thumbs up so another one at a very reasonable price point for all that you get because it's got nice presentation it really is an any day kind of fragrance you know it's got a lot going for it is what i'm trying to say are we going to get any here that are really like not worth it i don't know <laughs> then we got ferragamo intense leather up next, 106 for a 100 mil size bottle. That is way down there because the presentation here looks great. It's got a really nice kind of like faux leather vibe to it. It looks nice, looks expensive, feels expensive. As far as leather fragrances go, this is not made for somebody looking for something challenging. This is not an animalic leather. It's not a piercing leather. Uh, it's, it's very, sweetened up. But like a few of the other ones here, even though it has sweet, almost blue fragrance-esque pieces to it, it has a, a little classy side to it as well. Good performance also, and a lot of people are not gonna be wearing that. Uh, you're gonna have more people wearing the most wanted, uh, Dylan Blue, One Million Lucky, Coach, O oh Intense. Uh, a lot of these are much more popular than this one. Kind of flies under the radar and that could be appealing to a lot of people as well. Low DC Vetiver is next, 110 for a 100 mil size bottle. This one is a fragrance that I love. I think it smells great. The Vetiver is very clean, easy wearing, fresh. Um, paint by numbers to an extent, kind of simple, not overly complex. It's a Vetiver that has had any earthiness stripped away, but that makes it very, uh, like I said before, easy going, easy wearing for spring and summertime. For most people, I would say the majority of people possibly, that $110 for this is not really a good buy. If you want just a very clean, very simple vetiver, then it's worth checking out. Uh, but for the majority of people, again, I think they're gonna smell that and be like, no, oh, I'd rather take this or this or this or this or this or this or, you know, over that, right? But still, it's there, doing its thing. Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense is up next, 123 for 100 mil. So uh, a little pricier than pretty much everything else that we've talked about so far, other than this, whole $2 difference between the two. This is gonna be another one that for, people who like Iris, it is a big winner. For people who don't like Iris, obviously, it's not gonna work. I do think though that as far as gentlemen fragrances go, that this is one of the easier ones to wear because as a blue Iris, it is uh, a little bit toned down as far as like the makeup-y aspect of it goes. It's freshened up a bit. For me, it is an absolute home run. I love this stuff, but um, it is one that, like I said, is gonna be maybe a little harder play for some people because of the iris. The last one we're gonna talk about, Luna Rosa Carbon, 120 bucks for a 100 mil size bottle. 
that gets compared to Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette, only done in Prada's form and fashion. A little bit cleaner, a little less aggressive, but still similar to Sauvage EDT, which also for a 100 ml size bottle goes for one point. Just so as far as Lunar Roasted Carbon and Sauvage EDT goes, you know, six half dozen price wise. Some people are gonna gravitate more towards Sauvage and the pumped up performance. Other people will like having Luna Rosa Carbon being again, a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner. And for 120 for either Sauvage or Luna Rosa Carbon, for the amount of usability that your average person is gonna get, I think they're both home runs. So a lot of these here, I think are absolutely worth the price when you consider what other things that they're going up against are going for at retail. If I were going to pick my three favorites from here, just as far as, you know, the price goes and what they're up against and all that stuff, probably be the most wanted. I think at 120 for the type of fragrance that that is, uh, you know, you could get that instead of a bunch of other modern fragrances and that's gonna do as good a job, if not better than most of those other ones. And, you know, the versatility, the performance, all that stuff that you get, I think that's a crazy good buy. Probably Dylan Blue, 105, I think. You're getting one of the better designer all year blue fragrances for about a hundred bucks. And then, ooh, probably one million lucky. It's pretty tough, like uh, for this third spot, Luna Rosa Carbon, Explorer, uh, Toy Boy I think is interesting, but I think a lot of people are not gonna wanna wear that. I like the smell of it. It's just one of those deals where when you smell it, you go, oh, that's not for everybody, is it? So yeah, it kind of comes down to Gentleman, uh, One Million Lucky, and uh, Carbon and Explorer. And uh, yeah, really flop back and forth between the Gentleman and One Million Lucky. But yeah, I'll just stick with these. So there we go, guys. Some fragrances that are not insanely expensive at full retail. Not every single company is trying to pilfer every single dollar from your wallet. So make sure to give a shout out sometimes to some of these companies that are not just <laughs> egregiously price gouging. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow for another fragrance video. See you guys.